Welcome to Virgil's studio. I'm back. Can you believe that? Isn't this exciting? Uh, gosh, there's been so many things happening. Uh, I guess I've been building guitars mainly, but uh, every spare moment I've been digging into stuff on the recording side of things. I'm writing like a madman right now, just tons of songs. I, I, I can't find enough hours in the day to get them all out, to be quite honest, okay? Um, so anyways, today, I'm going to show you something a little bit different about Playbox. Playbox, it's been the big buzz here lately. Uh, we got this new uh, VST uh, that came out from Native Instruments, and it's um, it is really cool. I mean, I uh, I've been digging it. It's uh, it's a bit weird, <laughs> and what I mean by that is it's just very uh, God. What is it? It's very ambient sounding, Ooh, like a fine glass of wine. I mean, it's just like it's, it's got, it's got its um, moments. Let's put it that way. And I really liked it, but something happened as I was checking it out that kind of blew my mind, and that brought me down this rabbit hole to figure some other things out. And I'm going to actually show you this today, um, and it's the main reason why I'm keeping Playbox instead of saying, "Ah, I want my money back, damn it." Um, it's now I have actually used it for a few recordings already, so it's got that level of its own really neat things. Uh, those of you who don't know what Playbox is, there's just mad amounts of videos out there already on this. I'm really not going to go. I'm going to go over just uh, just a slight overview, just super super light brushing over this. Okay, um, what this has is it has these three main sections here. Okay. Uh, you're going to see that it has your chords section, it has your samples section, and then it has your FX section, okay? Um, so what we're going to do is if we look at the samples section, this is kind of cool. We could actually go into um, these different uh, presets in here, and you can click on here, and you can see that they have 325 presets. So they're not shy of having some cool things in here, okay? Uh, when we hit these samples in here and we go ahead uh, and play certain notes, and this is the thing where it turns into kind of weird and it feels like it's limited. However, I find it fascinating and I can't stop writing new music as a result of this because I'm so inspired by just li listening to different chords and how they work with each other. I'm always fascinated in chords and their relationships, right? So as we go through here, you can hear this because I'm just uh, pressing down. This is my C1 key. That oh sorry, I, wait, 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 hang on, I got to get over. I have to make sure that I'm selected on here. So as I'm going through here, I'm actually just hitting these eight keys. That's all it gives me. It gives me uh, these. I can't even hit my half step keys. Those do nothing. You can see it moving down there at the bottom, but it's actually just doing nothing. It's making no noise. That's the reason is because they have these set chords that they put in each one of these patches, okay? So as I select a patch, and I could go, like this one says, infectious, whatever. Um, I could hit one of these. Uh, let's go to New Adventure, sure. So now that I'm at New Adventure, uh, this is all loaded up here. I could go to the samples section, and it's showing me the samples that are played with each key. Now, what's interesting about this is, as I go through the keys, it's not only going to play different chords, but it's also going to be uh, providing us with different sounds as well. So as I go through these chords and scroll through these, go to the next one. It's changing a little bit. Let's go over to this one here, and you can see it. this is this is actually my first complaint with the program because I'm like a really old dude. See see the gray? There's a gray bit. I'm getting old, damn it. You kids, get out of my yard. Get out of my play box. Um, it's highlighted, but very faintly. Let's make it faint. <laughs> Sorry, I fainted. Okay, so when you see that, you're just going, 
those are some different cool amusing sounds i get that i enjoy it. it it sounds okay i'm not too bad with that i guess we can bring this volume up a little bit for you guys bring it here and maybe over here can you hear that okay now what i can do is i could even i can hit this die that's singular for dice scotty what is love okay so now what i'm going to do is hit the die and then boom we're at this uh we're totally at this different location we're at time travel marty we're gonna go back to the future so check it out let's hear what this sounds like i love it man now one of the neat things is it's telling me what key they're in they're in b minor right here and then they play these whole series of chords they don't tell you exactly what the chords are and i've got a little bit of a complaint about that but you can actually change out all this stuff if you want to kind of like create really cool stuff so again i'm going to try to move along and show you some of these basic things what i could do is i could say okay on this uh, on this let's go to this bottom row and let's change this to a bass now what's going to happen as soon as i hit this uh, little die here this is all these little cute little cubes these are the bass cubes Looks like little candy. Can I eat some of that? Can I have it? It's toxic. Uh, never mind. So then we can go to instruments up here and we can change this to, I don't know, let's go to synths. How does that sound? Hit the uh, die here. So now we got all different things that are going on. Um, let's come up to here and let's add, uh, we're going to change this to voices. And these were, these are the little bubbly cubes. So when I got the voices there and I hit uh, shuffle. You can see all this. these, are, it's, it's bubble gum. It's little, they're, they're chewing bubble gum and they stuck them to, uh, they're balloons. They're balloons at a circus. They're actually kind of cool. I don't know, I kind of like the graphics. Now when I go to play this chord, you can hear that that's what's going on with this first one. Now when I go to the second one, it's changing slightly. And I go to this next one, and I'm going there. We're peeking out here, it's going a little bit too loud. Yes, it's going a lot too loud. I apologize for that. I hope I didn't break anybody's ears. So when you see that, you know, go on there, and I'll bring this guy down a little bit too. Blah, blah. You should be okay. All right. So now as you're going through there, you can hear these different chords in there, and they sound kind of neat. Now, if you like the sound of one of these, like better than the rest, then what you could do is you could spread this across the entire keyboard excuse me, across those eight minimalistic keys. So as I hit spread right here, what it's gonna do is each one of these keys I'm poking, it's gonna keep that same sound there, which is kind of neat. Isn't that kind of cool? And again, you're hearing this general, like kind of ethereal sounding, but it sounds really neat and it definitely sounds different. I gotta give it that. And not only that, but you could go in there and you could tweak a bunch of things. You could go into this FX section here, and then you could go, um, I want this to be a lo-fi vinyl crush. Uh, I want to go the strum here, and I want to make this a, uh, let's see, we're going to have this strum be a uh, ARP. So if I want an ARP, I just go. Or it could just be the strum. So anything I want to do in there, I can kind of change around. Now, it's not that I haven't gotten bored with this yet. As a matter of fact, there's just so many things in here. I really am looking forward to spending more time in here. But I want to share mainly, and it's the whole point of this video, as to what I discovered and something I figured out for all of you Cubase users. Uh, you guys are going to uh, probably appreciate this. As we go through here, and if I hit these chords right here, what they have is they have this little uh, drag and drop into a MIDI track to export. So what I can do is I can just drag this onto um, my tracks here and I can bring it to like Piano Tech. Let's drag it there. So I can just drag these chords right here to Piano Tech, all right? Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get this out of the way for now. I want to show you some little tricks here in Cubase that should help you out. It's kind of cool. So I'm spreading this out a little spread out. Um, 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just kind of move this uh, to the beginning just for now. Um, but I would really just like to know what these chords are. And we're going to listen to them. Uh, and we're going to, here, here we go. So we have some different chords in here. And we are in the key of B minor. So we want to kind of see which chords they gave us. Watch this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just go to edit. Uh, sorry, I'm going to go to project and I'm going to go to uh, chord track and it's going to say create chord symbols. All right, because I want to get some chord symbols. I want to see what chords these are. So now I'm going to select all these tick marks here and then I hit OK. Now what it's going to do is it's going to give me all of these chords here sometimes. So we have a couple missing chords in here. We're going to see how to resolve those guys in a second. Um, for right now, this is saying, hey, it's a B harmonic minor. Well, what does that sound like? Ha <laughs> ha, love that. And if you click and hold that down, it will play that scale for you. Isn't that amazing? Now, uh, the next thing uh, that we're going to do is we're going to grab these, these two chords that it isn't telling us about. We're going to see if we can resolve this. I'm going to turn the uh, scissors on here. We're going to cut these right here. Just kind of separate these out because obviously they don't work well with others. Then I'm going to select these two tracks or these two uh, clips right here. I'm going to move them right over here. Uh, just move them down the road just a little bit. And then I'm going to go to the same thing again. I'm going to go to project. I'm going to go to uh, chord, uh, sorry, chord track, create chord symbols. And I'm going to see if it uh, does it to those guys there. It gave me a B minor. Uh, okay, so we're getting somewhere. Um, now, what about this next chord? Is it that close to this other one? Let's, uh, let's try just doing this one and, and let's move it like even farther down because apparently Cubase doesn't like this stuff here. And we're going to go to, uh, project once again, we're going to go to chord track and we're going to go create chord symbols, hit okay. And now we've got another B minor. A lot of times I think that it does this because it says, well, kids, it's close enough to the other one. So now that we have all of these chords, watch this. Um, I can kind of move these guys so they're just kind of all stacked together. It doesn't matter. I'm just wanna, I just want to clean up things, but it's at least giving me these um, chords that were out of uh, Playbox. Now, we're going to go on to the next level. We're going to um, we're gonna, we're gonna go to our chord pads track right here. And you can see it's default at the key of C. But boy, would it be neat to pull in these chords from Playbox so I could just do it with single keystrokes. This is, you know, obviously at this point of the game, you know that this is um, this is targeted to the person who's not like uh, the great pianist on the planet. I'm actually a guitarist, um, so uh, but I but I play a pianist on TV, Oops. <clears throat> on YouTube. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to pull those guys into here. We're going to pull this into our chords pads, chord pads in um, in Cubase. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to do the little drop down here. And it says, assign pads from chord track. No way. Are you serious? So I'm going to do that, right? And it's going to bring up a little prompt, a little warning. It says, uh, this operation will change all pad assignments and cannot be undone. It's like, yeah, sure, whatever, Johnny. So I'm going to hit OK, and boom, here's all my chords. Now, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pull this chord, this B minor, over here. So now this ends up being the first chord in here. And we have one with the F sharp bass. That's the slash chord. But one of the things that I could do is if I go into here, I can uh, click on my Show Hide Chord Assistant. So as I see this chord assistant, we can see that we're in the key of D here, right? So now, even though that they've given me some really cool chords here, it wouldn't hurt for me to drag and drop some of these chords within there too. So let's look at uh, pulling. We can see we got this G major here. We have a, a G flat in here. There's a G flat, right? That's also known as the F sharp, just saying, kids, uh, which is kind of odd because it's got this one, then that one, right? Um, so I can just take this E minor. We have a standard E minor. We got the E minor 9 up there. But I can take an A. We have this A major. Uh, so we've got this A major. We've got a G major. 
we can put that right there wherever we want in here really um am i missing anything we've got the b minor f sharp minor uh this we we're actually not even showing this f sharp minor and then we have uh as soon as we go over this way we can start seeing stuff that goes a little bit outside of the realm and it doesn't sound that great but we can still use it um so it's given us uh, all these chords here now what would i do with all of this well i have these chords now that i can kind of play and i can start scrolling through saying hey what is, how does it sound when i'm going through these chords and i can do it on my keyboard what i can do is i can start hitting these different chords on the keys right here and i can just find this is lovely so we can hear already we can already hear that we got some good stuff coming out of here i'm going to move these guys out of the way uh why am i moving them out of the way well if i want if i want to mess with this stuff later i already have a backup over there and i can always just check it out if i want what I'm really wanting to do, though, and I'm going to mute out this chord track because we don't, we really don't need it at this point. Um, what I'm really wanting to do is if, if I have the, oops, so let's go back. So let's go back here. Um, I would like to save these chords, and I may add some chords later on. So if I like this A, and I want to put a uh, maybe an A sus four on here. All I got to do is click down here. I can just click the A. Then we're going to go sus4, which is nice. Um, we can do a G sus4. That would sound cool, too. So let's get a G sus4 just to fill some stuff in here. So we'll go, or a sus2. That's nice. So now we have all these different chords. That's funny it cut it off right there even though it shows that over there it's not gonna let me play it on the keyboard but let's see what we got here um, I'm gonna go here I'm gonna go to uh, this so we're gonna go to um, save chord pads preset and we're gonna call this uh, what it is which is I mean, it's re we're really in the, even though we're in the key of D major, this is more of a B minor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just, uh, and uh, I'm going to just name it. Um, and I've done this before uh, with the B minor thing. So I'm just going to go B minor virtualized two. So this is, and I've done this before in here. And I just hit OK. So now this ends up being uh, one of these that I can get out of here. So if I go to Load Chord Pads Presets, we can go through all these and we can start looking for them. And um, it's showing my a couple that I have done here already, which is kind of nice to have, right? So that's good. Now, how does this all come out and what do we do? Well, you just have fun at this point, kids. You just start going through these chords and you just you start scrolling through these. So I like that combination, right? So we're just gonna go. Just record this, right? That cut off that first one on me, so I'm going to redo that. Let's try that again. I shouldn't have uh, overlapped those. Try that again. So now that I have a couple chords in there, that's going to start like so. Um, I can move in. I can just throw on a little bit of drums. I got a Groove Agent here. I um, loaded up a track in here. Uh, this is from their, I think it's from their cinematic stuff. So we're going to just uh, listen to one of these in here. So I'm going to just drag and drop that on there. So we have this um, 
cool little drum thing going on there, I guess. So if you listen to those, you're going to hear that just working with that kind of nicely, right? So listen to this. a lot of times and uh, I, I know I'm going down some rabbit holes here but in groove agent when we have things like this uh, we can actually listen to this and if we go to the instrument here we can just find where that where is that sample so it seems that seems to be one of them that seems to be the other now What's happening is this is a, I'm hearing a B here, not, not like a B around my head, but if I were to go to, uh, I'm going to go to piano tech and I'm going to hit a B note and I am correct. So we hear this B going on there and we can do a couple things. We could actually just change this out. We could actually make another sample and we could just take samples of this that we could change around within there if we like, or we could make life easy and just simply double click on here and then we're going to just take that out of here right uh so that even though that that is nice and you could hear that right there i'm going to hit delete and that's doing the same thing i can pull in my own synths to do this so this this way it's not just kind of running that whole time it's cute that they do it but i would much rather have a synth doing this right so here we go So this is so cool and this whole thing was taken from Playbox and I can just drag, I can drag this into, uh, I had already picked out a thing on pigments earlier off of 3.5 and here's a, here's uh, some pads coming off of there so it would sound like this maybe. become the beginnings of these songs that I'm writing and I can't stop writing. We can go to this next section here and say, hey, well, what I want to do is I want, I want that to happen four times. That's kind of common in music, right? So all we're going to do is we're going to loop that right there. We could take this other, uh, we're going to take this other drum piece from here, go to the pattern, and we can pull this other groove from here. I kind of like those sounds in there, but we got plenty of synths that can actually take over and do some cool stuff on that side. Let's hear this next one. Let's hear this next one. These are breaks. Sure, let's throw this. In. We're just looking for uh, some contrast here. Now, now I got two of these. I can come in and I can just bring in a couple other chords. <laughs> and you guys thought this was about Playbox, and it's not. It's just. It is, but it isn't. It's our source. So I sourced some cool chords and we're just pulling some different chords out of that key. It doesn't hurt to know a little bit of music theory where you just say, oh, okay, well, yeah, this is how these chords are in this particular key, blah, blah, blah. So as we go through here, watch this. What we're going to do now is we're going to get some chords that go to this uh, section. And let's do... Uh, Let's kind of get some uh, major chords out of here. Did I ever even give this a D chord? This is crazy. There's not even a D. We have a... We don't even... We don't even have a D chord in here. So let's replace this guy out with a D chord. We're just going to go with a D major. So we'll just do a D major and we'll make sure... Oops. So we'll just make it there. So let's hear how this sounds. Uh, let's go with. So we're going to try recording this, uh, this other chord progression over into here. So now we have that chord progression there. That didn't, that was okay, that'll work. 
Let's look at this. Yeah, they all look beautiful. So now as we have this section, we can bring that in here. And then this brings in our little course. We could always just do four there, hear how that sounds. And if we come back over to this part, we're gonna go right here and we're gonna to listen to how they sound together. And there you have it, kids. We are ready for a recording contract with Atlantic Records. Hope everybody enjoyed that and have some fun with Playbox. I mean, it's a really cool program. You dig in there, you can snag some chords from there. You can use it for all sorts of things. That's what I've been doing lately. I find it very inspiring and I uh, hope you all have a great day. Keep on writing. Just write. Just write. Shut up and play your guitar. Uh, piano. Yeah, that's what Frank's out.